amazing about vision research, how diverse it is. Uh, it spans different disciplines. And today we have exceptional scientists and uh, our friend from Switzerland. And uh, again, I would like to thank you uh, uh, to attend, that you attend and also thank uh, our sponsors as we had this on the display. So with that, Emily. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining our seminar. My name is Emily Tom, and I am an MD-PhD student in Dorota Skaranska Craftsticks Lab here at UC Irvine. It is my great pleasure to introduce our distinguished speaker, Jean-Marc Maté, Senior Lecturer and Director of Research in the Departments of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology at the University of Geneva, Switzerland. Dr. Maté earned his PhD in Molecular Biology from the University of Geneva. He then completed his postdoctoral fellowship with Dr. W. Maxwell Cohen in the Developmental Neurobiology Lab at the Salk Institute. From there, he continued his scientific journey as an invited fellow in Dr. Mark Fishman's lab at the Howard Hughes Medical Institute in Boston, Massachusetts. He then returned to Switzerland, where he was the chief of the oculogenetic unit at the Jules Gonin Ophthalmic Hospital at the University of Lausanne, in addition to the, his positions as senior lecturer and research group leader at the University of Geneva. Dr. Mater's research focuses on defining how the interplay between regulatory factors and key transcriptional targets coordinates the complex processes of neuron specification and morphogenesis of the retina. Specifically, he is interested in how HO7 interconnects a cell fate decision with the genetic pathways that regulate cell cycle exit, cell polarity, and cell migration. Dr. Matera's research was continuously funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation for 20 years. In addition, he has several grants from private foundations for his work on identifying genetic components of AI. AMD, as well as his work on using the pigeon retina as a model to identify genes involved in the development and maintenance of the macula phobia. He currently serves as the president of the Gene and Vision Foundation, which supports research projects studying foveal vision in birds. It is our great pleasure to welcome you here today. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to Dr. Jean-Marc Maté. The last one. This one. Oh, no. yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Perfect. Thank you. So, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for the invitation and uh, please, uh, the kind introduction. So at first glance, uh, it is a bit funny to have a, a talk about birds in a center for translational vision. Uh, we all know that vision in, uh, in, uh, in birds is, is, is truly exceptional. Uh, and without exaggeration, we can, uh, we can say that birds have the best visual system ever uh, developed. So I think it is interesting to, to understand why this, is, uh, why, why this is the case. Uh, the brain of uh, this small pastry is about 2,000 times smaller than our brain. Nonetheless, like many of its congeners, it has a, a rich social life and exhibits highly complex behaviors like singing, migrating thousands of miles, building nests, and catching flying insects. Today, I would like to, to show you how birds 
open new avenues to understand how the, the retina and brain visual area are, are built. The fovea, which means pit in, uh, in Latin, is a, is a tiny structure, hardly visible in the, in the retina. However, the, the advent of this uh, retinal specialty during evolution changed animal life, and it was a, it was a breakthrough innovation uh, in primates and in, uh, in modern birds, without forgetting some, some reptiles and, uh, and fish. So the four parameters uh, define eyesight. The, the sharpness of, uh, of visual perception, the perception of movement, the perception of colors, and uh, light sensitivity. In, uh, in primates and, and birds, both spatial acuity and the perception of colors are usually much better than in other animal uh, species. In addition, uh, modern birds have a higher temporal acuity and uh, their, their retina is very well adapted for detecting movement in high resolution. However, bird, except nocturnal uh, species, have a rather low light uh, sensitivity because of the low proportion of rods in their, in their retina. So modern birds, or neoaves, uh, split from their ancestors, chicken, duck, goose, and other galloanceri, um, 60 or so million years ago. Galloanceri are, are precaution, meaning that chicks are fully autonomous shortly after, after hatching. In contrast, neoaves, or modern birds, are altricial. So hatchlings need parental care. As uh, suggested by Christine Charvet, altriciality, uh, and not only in birds, in, uh, help it to, to relax uh, constraints on the, on the duration of, uh, of ontogenesis, thereby contributing to the, to the expansion of the, of the brain. Uh, it takes time to build a, a, a good brain. And uh, I will show you that altriciality and time are required for the development of foveal vision. A better visual system uh, <clears throat> was crucial to help birds to develop fast and sustained flight, which are important conditions for accelerating the, the conquest of new and remote territories, and to boost uh, speciation uh, that eventually led to the appearance of 10,000 or so new species during a relatively short period of time. So fovea are diverse, but they, uh, they share several uh, characteristics. They are rod-free area with high density of cones, and they concentrate, at least in primates, a significant fraction of the total population of gorgon cells. In the human retina, one fourth of gorgon cells are localized in the fovea that represent less than 1% of the, of the retinal surface. So although uh, recent studies have, have revealed important structural, molecular, and functional aspects of the primate phobia. This structure remains mysterious in, uh, in, many, in many respects. So because of the very high neural densities and sustained activity, the, the phobia is one of the regions of the central nervous system where the, the metabolic activity is, uh, is among the, the highest. In, uh, in human, uh, the fovea and uh, the surrounding macula can be, as you know, the, the target of different uh, uh, retinal uh, diseases. For instance, in a, in, in a maculopathy described by, uh, here by, by Veronica Vaklavik, a mutation of the ataxin 1 gene led to, to the loss of, uh, of foveal cones and foveal cones only. It looks like this, these neurons were, were cut out from the, from the fovea with a, with a razor blade. So the fovea is is very special. The, the recognition that the fovea is a region for, for acute vision uh, dates back to the end of the, the 19th century. For instance, Sloanaker uh, described a, a central and a temple a fovea in a swallow uh, species. He, he suggested that the, the central fovea was for monocular lateral vision. Whereas the, the temple, the peripheral uh, fovea was for frontal 
uh, vision in a, in a quite narrow uh, binocular uh, field. So in my presentation, I will outline some key aspects of foveal uh, histology. Uh, then I will explain how the production of ganglion cells in the retina and how the development and organization of the, of the midbrain had to adapt in, in modern birds using the, the pigeon as a, as a model. So over the, the decades, bird retina have been analyzed in less than one person of the, of the total number of bird species with histology of uh, varying uh, quality. So three years ago, we, we launched a, a, a project aiming to, to collect retina and brain tissues in as many bird species as possible and to obtain good histology and to be able to make reliable interspecies uh, comparison. We, we use standardized protocols for the collection and processing of the retina, optic nerve, and, and different brain, uh, brain regions. So in the large majority of uh, journal modern birds analyzed so far, there is a, a, central, a central phobia, which is in most cases uh, shallow. Rel relatively few species have a deep phobia, and even less do have both a central and a temporal phobia. In rare cases, like in, uh, in swifts, um, there is a single deep temporal phobia, but there is no central phobia. So the, <clears throat> the swift is a, is a fascinating case. It is one of the fastest flyer hunting for insects on the, on the wing. But the density of cones in its aphobate central retina is the highest among whole species analyzed so far. The low ratio of ganglion cells to, to cones suggest a strong convergence of cones on ganglion cells that may exclude the, pres the presence of, uh, of midget pathways. So as a reminder, midget pathways, one or two ganglion cells and one or two bipolar cells are devoted to, to a, single, a single cone. Whereas in non-midget pathway, uh, several cones and bipolar cells converge on a single uh, ganglion cell. So this hawk uh, is also a, a good flyer, able to, to chase small birds. And in that species, there is no temporal phobia, despite the fact that the, the ganglion cell density in the temporal retina is among the highest on, on record. And the one-to-one -one ratio of cones, uh, <clears throat> of ganglion cells to cones suggests that here, the, the midget pathway as, um, at least may have the exclusivity. So it appears that the, the high densities of cones and uh, of ganglion cells are necessary, but not sufficient condition for the, for the pit uh, formation. We have to wait for the next picture, which is, which, which is quite heavy, but it will come out. Yes, so our survey of, uh, of phobia in different bird species indicate that the ratio of ganglion cells to cones is in general uh, comprised between 0.4 and, uh, and 0.6, and that there is no significant difference between uh, deep and, uh, and shallow um, uh, phobia, suggesting that both midget and non-midget uh, pathways are elements of, uh, uh, of these uh, phobia. So this idea is not new. On this uh, century-old drawing of the, of the fovea of a finch, uh, Ramon Icajal uh, pinpoints the presence of midget uh, uh, gorgon cells with narrow uh, <coughs> dendritic trees, and non-midget uh, gorgon cells where up to, to five codes make connections via five bipolar cells with one a single parasol uh, gorgon cells. He already noticed that the, the soma of non-midget ganglion cells was bigger than the one of midget ganglion cells. So histological data raise the question of whether the, the pit formation depends on the co-localization of midget and non-midget uh, pathways. We had the, the opportunity to, to compare the, the retina of uh, several uh, juvenile bound swallow, which were already able to fly, but uh, unfortunately, were injured and had to be uh, euthanized. So almost most specimens uh, have 
already a fully developed uh, deep uh, central uh, fovea. In few juveniles, there is a, a, a central incipient fovea which, which looks uh, like, like a dome. So in this area, the, the ratio of uh, ganglion cells to, to cone is uh, lower than at the, at the periphery of the, of the dome, suggesting difference in the distribution of uh, midget and non-midget pathways within uh, foveal and perifoveal area. So zooming in, zooming in on details of the dome shows well-ordered uh, radial uh, colons. And low magnification histologic analysis suggests an arrangement where colons of eight to 10 bipolar cells connect four cones and one single uh, ganglion cell. So such an arrangement in, uh, in, in, in radial colons before the, the pit eventually uh, develops may indeed provide uh, an effective way for organizing um, neuronal circuits when several codes and bipolar cells have to converge on a single uh, ganglion cell. Although we have only a snapshot picture of the, of the process, we can guess that the pit develops when the, the columns of, of bipolar cells are displaced from a, 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 a radial to, to more tangential position with cone that stay in the, in, in, in the pit. So when uh, the fovea is, uh, is fully developed, uh, bundles of, uh, of processes connecting the, the displaced bipolar cells with foveal, uh, foveal cones uh, are visible here. Uh, interestingly, within the pit of the, this adult uh, swallow, there is a high proportion of, of ganglion cells with, uh, with giant soma. And these neurons are more likely to be involved in, uh, in non-midget uh, pathways. So behavioral uh, experiments have shown that birds like, uh, like flycatchers can uh, resolve alternating light-dark cycle at up to 145 hertz, which is 50 hertz over the, the, the highest frequency shown in any other uh, vertebrates. So there is no data for the, the swallows and, and, and swifts, but they might perform as well or even better than, uh, than flycatchers. So the presence of non-midget foveal uh, circuits with wide range of sensitivity to rapid uh, variations in, uh, in light input might provide the, the fovea with both high tempo and high spatial uh, acuity, which is essential to detect movement uh, in high uh, resolution, essential to, to, catch, to catch a fly. <clears throat> so bird retina contain uh, a small proportion of what uh, we call uh, giant garden cells that are neurons having uh, a soma uh, <clears throat> greater than uh, 400 uh, square micrometers. They are expected to have a broad uh, dendritic trees, thick axons, and the axon terminals arborescence in the, in the midbrain could make connection with, with a number of target neurons. And then we'll come back to this point uh, later. So in the optic nerve, <clears throat> there are clusters of, um, of large uh, axons in specific area. We don't know yet whether they are from foveal uh, giant ganglion cells. Um, the optic nerve is, a, is an interesting um, source of insights about the, the whole population of, uh, of ganglion cells. And uh, we have launched uh, an interspecies uh, comparative analysis of axon size and topographic uh, distribution. The, the bird optic nerve uh, contain millions of, uh, of axons, uh, and that makes manual analysis over the whole nerve out of reach. So Michel has developed an efficient tool that apply deep learning algorithm to, to map axons in, uh, in the whole uh, optic nerve. I must say that axons smaller than one square micrometers are, are not detected here. So, they, they, these are, are, are results of, of preliminary uh, analysis, but there are also, but uh, there are already some some interesting uh, uh, outputs. So we and we continue to train the, the algorithm to, to increase the, the resolution. 
So from left to, to right, the, 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 the microscope uh, picture of the optic nerve, the, the, the algorithm output, the total number of, of axon, and the number of large axon in uh, per square. So interestingly, region of high axon densities uh, and regions where large axons are loca located do not always uh, coincide. So this is also true for, for other species like the swift and the, and the pigeon. So <clears throat> our results show, although that axons are, for instance, larger in, uh, in swift than in uh, swallow and, uh, and pigeon, uh, although swift and swallow are unrelated uh, species, both of them feed on uh, almost exclusively on airborne uh, insects while flying, but the, the flight of the swift is, is much faster. The swift is indeed the, one of the fastest flying bird, and its retina should be adapted to very fast moving uh, uh, environment. So to, um, in order to, to resolve issues about uh, uh, neural uh, circuits in, uh, in the bird phobia, uh, we just started a collaboration with the laboratory of uh, Jean Livet at the Institute of Vision in Paris. Jean has developed over the years powerful tools to, for the multicolor labeling of, uh, of neurons in, uh, in vivo. However, for obvious reasons, it is difficult to use uh, wild birds to, to make, uh, to make uh, experiments. So <clears throat> 10 years ago, in October 2013, um, we decided with, uh, with Tania Rodriguez to choose the, the pigeon as a, as a new model for investigating uh, how foveal vision develops in, uh, in birds. The, the pigeon offers several uh, advantage and uh, a few other that will become evident uh, shortly. The fact that the pigeon genome is not yet fully sequenced and annotated makes transcriptome analysis more, more complicated. Hopefully this issue will be uh, resolved uh, uh, soon. So high density of, uh, of ganglion cells is a, is a common feature of foveate birds. In pigeon, these densities are significantly higher than uh, in chicken. In broad area, around the, the central fovea, and also in temple or peripheral regions, although there is no temple fovea in, uh, in pigeon. So one of our first question was to determine how the pigeon can increase the, the density of, uh, of gorgon cells. So at this time, Tanya was a young PhD student and she, um, she became a, a little bit uh, skeptical about the project um, when she didn't find a single publication about eye and retina development in, uh, in pigeon. Indeed, uh, she had to, to start from, from scratch. And uh, I must say that she did a, a wonderful work and made some important and unexpected findings. I should also say that the project would not have been uh, possible without a regular and quite massive supply of pigeon eggs provided over the, over the years by, uh, by Philippe Delaunay and Francois Jardin. Both of them are pigeon breeders in Normandy. So at the first glance, eye and uh, retina growth looked similar in, uh, in pigeon and, and chicken. However, uh, Tanya quickly uh, made an interesting observation, suggesting that retina development was indeed different in, uh, in pigeon. It, it, H7 is a, is a transcription factor, which is required for the production of ganglion cells in, uh, in vertebrates. Mm. And I will tell you more about this, uh, this factor in, uh, in a few seconds. The electroporation of an expression vector revealed a robust expression of H7 um, at embryonic day six, uh, the blue dots on the, uh, on the screen. Whereas only few cells were labeled at the corresponding stage in, uh, in pigeon. So the interspecies difference became obvious while comparing uh, retina histology. At embryonic day nine, the ganglion cell layer and the outer nuclear and plexiform layers are already well developed in, uh, in chicken, whereas in lamination is not yet visible in, uh, in pigeon. So actually, uh, H7 expression peaks three days later in pigeon than in chicken. Uh, this transcription factor is a, is a basic helix-loop-helix protein 
which is almost exclusively expressed in the developing retina. And it is dedicated to the production of organ cells. DOTA has made several important contributions to our understanding of the regulation and function of H7, both in chicken and uh, in mouse. In one of her first paper, she was able to show that the, the three amino acids <coughs> facing out in the basic domain of H7, named at this time AT5, contribute to define the specific activity of this uh, uh, transcription factor. I would like to take this opportunity to, to mention the fact that Dorota has pioneered the, the technique of, of chromatin immunoprecipitation in nervous tissues. She was able to, to characterize interactions of ATOH7 and other transcription factors with uh, target regulatory regions in the, the developing retina and in brain tissues of different uh, animal uh, species. So coming back to our subject, we, uh, we were intrigued by the uncoupling between growth and cell differentiation in the, in the pigeon retina. In an attempt to, to distinguish between programs involved in tissue grow, growth versus neurogenesis, we have compared the, the pigeon and the chicken uh, transcriptome at three uh, developmental uh, stages. So analysis of RNA sequencing data was not straightforward in pigeon because as I already uh, told you, the, the genome was and still is not yet fully sequenced and annotated. However, uh, Nihao uh, Kravchik was able to, to distinguish between genes that display the same expression <coughs> profiles in, in, the, in the two species and which are likely involved in tissue growth and those regulated by ATOH7, which are activated in pigeons three days later than, uh, than in chicken. So while in chicken, about half of, uh, of retinal uh, progenitors exit the, the cell cycle and differentiate at early embryonic stages, in pigeon, a cell, cells stay in the pool of, of progenitors for about three more days. So this strategy has the advantage of increasing the number of progenitors who will eventually become Gandhian cells. However, the same strategy has the disadvantage of postponing retinal development beyond hatching. So in chicken, which is like the other Galloanceri uh, precocial species, the need for a functional visual system at the time of hatching uh, requires the production of Gorgon cells at early stages, thereby de facto limiting their, their number. In the end, there are three times more ganglion cells and three times more uh, axons in the pigeon optic nerve compared to, to chicken. So 7.5 versus 2.5 million uh, in chicken. And remember that we have a, only about 1.2 million axons in our optic nerve. So we wondered how the, the delayed uh, neurogenesis in pigeon was, uh, was regulated. Uh, both in chicken and mouse, H7 is, uh, is activated in, uh, in proliferating uh, progenitors. And during this uh, initial phase, H7 uh, is, uh, is expressed at a low level and cannot trigger the production of the organ cells. However, it, act it activates, at least in birds, the <clears throat> uh, genes like the, the notch effector uh, S53. And this leads to the, the lengthening of the, of the cell cycle, which is required for the sustained expression of H2H7 and the accumulation of the protein at level sufficient to trigger expression of genes required for Gorgon cell differentiation. Laurent Bordier, when he was a PhD student in the lab, found that S53, by upregulating the gene, the gene encoding CYP26A, which is a major retinic acid hydroxylase, uh, decreases mitochondrial activity, and that contributes to the lengthening of the, of the cell cycle and to the onset of dormant cell uh, differentiation. While in the chick retina, mitochondrial activity has already much decreased at embryonic day six, in pigeon, 
activity remains high until uh, embryonic day nine. So in pigeons, the, the high level of retinoic acid and the robust mitochondrial activity contribute to maintain retinal progenitors in, uh, in proliferation, thereby prolonging their uncommitted uh, status and postponing the, the production of, uh, of gonglion cells. So <clears throat> coming back to the, to the phobia, uh, the pit uh, is the most evident feature of the phobia, and pit formation represents the last step of phobia development, which in human is completed 12 months after birth, and in pigeon, two months after, after hatching. So both in primates and birds, it takes time to, to, make, uh, to make a phobia. So in pigeon, uh, when all ganglion cells have, have been produced five days before hatching, the, the retina is about half of the adult size, and the density of ganglion cells is high all over the, the, the retina. In the, in the following days, there is a, a decrease of cell density because of the tangential expansion or stretching of the, of the retinal retin tissue. However, ganglion cell density remains high in a, in a central area where there is no stretching. And that we define as the incipient uh, phobia. So axons growing toward the, 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 optic, the optic disc largely avoid this uh, incipient phobia. And we don't know why, but it may contribute to prevent tissue stretching in this specific area. So one might wonder why the, the completion of fovea development and the, and the pit formation in birds and primates extend over a few months. And one reason could be that the, the pit forms when uh, neural circuits uh, are fully developed and when ganglion cells make functional uh, connections with their uh, target neurons in the, in the brain. So this brings me to, to my next and, uh, and last point, which is how the, the brain of uh, 48 birds had adapted for, for receiving high number of uh, uh, retinal inputs. In birds, the, the optic tectum is the, the largest visual center in the, in the brain, and the two lobes form uh, from the, the roof of the, uh, of the midbrain. It is homologous to the superior colliculus in, uh, in, in, in mammals. So ganglion cell axons terminate in the, in the superficial uh, layers of the, of the contralateral lobe, where they establish connections with neurons of the upper layers of the, of the optic lobe, um, of what is called the, the SGFS. And uh, these connections are established according to a retinotopic uh, map. So to determine how the, the presence of one or two fovea could reflect on cell densities in the, in the tectum, uh, we divided the, the lobes in, uh, in three sectors that encompass, as far as we know, the area where foveal ganglion cells project. So after months of, uh, of cell counting on uh, hundreds of uh, semi-thin plastic sections, uh, in species with, with one uh, or, or two uh, fovea, or with no fovea, like in chicken, quail, and in a tony hole, which is a nocturnal, nocturnal uh, modern bird with no fovea. It was an important control to, to, be, to distinguish between Galeron seri and, and modern birds. So uh, in the end, we found that cell densities are, are two to four times um, higher in, uh, in the, in the, in the foveate species with uh, the highest density in birds with uh, deep central and a temple uh, fovea. So then one obvious question was how the how foveate birds increase neuron density in their optic tectum. Uh, and this is an amazing story that I will outline briefly. Actually, the, the pigeon has been incredibly helpful in uh, in addressing, addressing this, uh, this question. So in pigeon, uh, three days before, before hatching, the, the neural densities in the superficial layers of the, of the tectum are three to four times higher than, uh, than in chicken. Remember that in pigeon, the, the optic tectum, 
receive three times more retinal inputs than, than in chicken. So the increase of neuron density in the pigeon optic tectum is achieved during, during embryogenesis. So then we ask it whether increase in neuron density could result like in the retina from delayed uh, neurogenesis. The, the comparison of the pattern of expression of, uh, of genetic markers like neurogenin and neurod and of yeah, this target. Uh, um, the, um, careers. And marks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for instance, axon growth uh, indicate that the, the early development of the optic tectum unfolds at the same pace in, uh, in pigeon and chicken and this until embryonic day seven. Then, from this stage, the, the divergence of developmental trajectories between pigeon and chicken is, uh, is striking. While in chicken, the large majority of cells migrate out of the ventricular zone to establish cellular and uh, taxiform layers. In uh, pigeon, cells re remain stuck in the, in the ventricular zone. Moreover, while a groove separates the two lobes in, uh, in chicken, they don't yet separate in, uh, in, in pigeon. So in both species, the, the optic tectum display a uh, rhygal uh, fascicle uh, consisting of parallel rows of, of glial fibers abutting the, the, ventricular, the ventricular zone. However, whereas in chicken, cells migrate along glial fibers uh, to form the, the, tectal, the tectal plate, uh, in pigeon, no cell feel the the, the fascicle uh, interspace, interspaces. So an astonishing fact is that in pigeon, early neurons, even though that they are stuck on the basal side of the, of the ventricular zone, differentiate and extend long axons, much like in, in chicken. So axons grow between the, the row of, uh, of rhygal uh, glial fibers. So our transcriptomic uh, analysis indicate that uh, out of the 160 or so genes that were upregulated in both the pigeon and chicken optic tectum between embryonic day six and uh, 10, um, 72, so more than half are involved in uh, neural uh, differentiation and directly involved in neural differentiation or neural activity. The comparison of the expression pattern of, uh, of, of neural market marker, like for instance, uh, a, a neural acetyl, acetylcholine receptor subunit, uh, which is known to be involved in the visual uh, information processing, indicate that the differentiation of early neurons at, occur at a, at a similar pace uh, in, uh, in, 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 both, in both species. So why in pigeon uh, cells differentiate in uh, on the, on the basal side of the, of the ventricular zone, uh, progenitor cells actively proliferate on the apical side of the, uh, <clears throat> to, to embryonic, uh, uh, up to embryonic day 10. Whereas in chicken, cell proliferation has already stopped uh, three days earlier. So this prolonged cell proliferation uh, in pigeon is far from being a marginal since it leads to the to a doubling of the total uh, cell population. So to summarize, cell, cell numbers and uh, and tissue sizes increase at the same pace in both species up to embryonic day seven. So at this stage, they there are half as many cells in pigeon uh, as in chicken in a tissue volumes uh, twice smaller. Then, while in chicken, cell proliferation has basically stopped uh, at, this day, uh, at, at this stage in pigeon, uh, 27 more cells, million more cells are, are produced during the, the next uh, three days. So in the end, um, there is the same number of, of tectal cells in, uh, in both species. However, the volume of the optic tectum remains twice smaller in, uh, in, uh, in pigeon. And this is a key step for, for increasing uh, neuron densities. So our transcriptomic analysis indicate that in pigeon, different genes regulate proliferation of the early and of the late progenitors. While, in, while a majority of genes involved in cell proliferation are expressed both in early and, uh, and late progenitors, 
we identified a set which are specifically and strongly upregulated in, uh, in late progenitors, whereas uh, another set of genes are downregulated, much like in, uh, much like in, uh, in chicken, suggesting that these genes are not involved in the expansion of the late pool of, of progenitors. So we cannot yet make sense of these, uh, of these changes. It could be a necessary adaptation uh, implemented by, by pigeon for, for expanding the, the late pool of progenitors under specific conditions that does not exist in the, in the developing uh, chicken brain. So immediately after the, 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 the end of the, of the prolonged period of cell proliferation, neurons start to, to migrate out of the ventricular zone to, to establish the, the different uh, <clears throat> layer according to, to an inside out uh, type of, uh, of developmental gradient, much like in, uh, uh, in chicken. However, while in chicken, the <clears throat> midbrain development is basically achieved before hatching, in pigeon cell migration and lamination are completed several days before hatching. Uh, 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 I have a problem with my cursor. I cannot change the slide. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, so neuron produced by the, the by the late pool of, of progenitors. Uh, migrate um, in the most superficial layers of the of the tectum, and um, with this in ovo experiment, we can we can show that uh, increased cell density in pigeon mainly concern uh, neurons making synaptic connections with the uh, axon terminals of uh, of retinal ganglion cells, which are I remind you three times more abundant in uh, in pigeon than uh, than in chicken. So. The, the advent of, uh, of foveal vision, uh, vis vision during, during bird evolution was uh, is, is required some, some major changes in, uh, in retina and, uh, and brain development. And um, uh, in conclusion, uh, I, I am taking the, the liberty, sorry. Um, to, to say that in order to make progress in our understanding of, uh, of macropathies like AMD, we need uh, to learn uh, a lot more about uh, the, the phobia and uh, of its confluence in the, in the brain. For obvious reason, it is difficult to perform on primate all the, the experiments needed to, uh, all the needed experiments to uh, required for, for, for to, 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 to increase our knowledge of, uh, uh, of the phobia. And, uh, the bird is an important uh, alternative. So people who did the work. Lydia uh, and, uh, and Dorota initiated the, the project on ganglion cell genesis. Florence, uh, Julio, Tanya analyzed the interplay between transcription factors uh, at the time of cell cycle exit. Laurent was able to demonstrate how the how mitochondrial activity contributes to, to ganglion cell uh, genesis. Uh, Tanya and uh, together with Michelle, Michal, Linda, Marie, and I conduct, conducted the, the pigeon project. Michelle and, uh, and, Lid, uh, and Linda uh, are two mathematicians uh, and they helped a lot to make sense of RNA sequencing and morphometric uh, data. Um, I'm grateful to the Swiss National Science Foundation for its uh, continuous support during the, the past uh, 20, 20 years. Uh, thank you for your attention. Let's start with two questions from the room and uh, then we'll go to uh, our Zoom. So let's go with our favorite, uh, Emma. Uh, thank you so much for your talk. I learned a lot. Um, my question is very simple. I'm wondering if the um, uh, ganglion cells, uh, you know, leave uh, the progenitor um, a cycle earlier in chicken versus pigeon because the close proximity to Earth, you know, the you know, it's probably in the genetic code that chickens are don't need to have ganglions because they are Terrestrial. closer to, to yeah. Earth. Yeah, but the, the difference between uh, between uh, the, the, 
the, the difference in density of bones and cells between chicken and, uh, and pigeon uh, is the same that we have between uh, old bird and, and new birds. Okay. So the, of course, the, the modern birds are, uh, are better flyers, but, but not all modern bird, birds are, are great flyers. So uh, there is no direct uh, correlation or coincidence between uh, the, the high density of bone and cells or and uh, in, in the, the late uh, withdrawing of, uh, of progenitors from the cell cycle between be, between between old and, and modern birds. I think they we cannot find, but we can reverse the the, 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 the question and by saying that of course when uh, birds are not when the density of organ cells is not high enough, of course uh, it is difficult for, for birds to fly. So uh, they they have to adapt to uh, to the gut to the ground, and uh, we have also a specific diet. They, they are they are herbivore. They are not uh, they are unable to to to, uh, to catch uh, insects to the fly. So it was another adaptation that resulted from the from the low density of organs and the low density of organ cells in, the, in chicken. And, but duck, for instance, duck are a good a good flyer, but they they have no the the. They are, they are unable to catch insects uh, and fly, and um, they have not a very precise flight. They, they, they are flying in open open space. They, they cannot uh, build nests in uh, in trees and and so on. So it's uh, and they will also have a slow density of garden cells. Good. Hi, professor. Nice talk. Um, I have two questions. Number one, uh, what's the difference in lifespan, average lifespan between a pigeon and chicken? Would you attribute some of those differences to that? And number two, could you comment on Miller glia um, features that are unique in the pigeon? We don't know uh, about New York, New York glia. We, we don't know much about uh, the, the no data uh, where, where we can compare the from New York glia uh, in chicken and pigeons. Right? This question uh, about the, the lifespan, it's it pigeon. You can keep a pigeon 15 years in, a, in captivity, uh, but in normal life, they, uh, they have a life expectancy of maybe three or four years. And uh, there is no, you know, there is a big difference between, uh, of course, domestic, uh, domestic birds uh, living in a uh, farm and uh, in wilderness. Chance are much lower, but I think the life expectancy is not is not is not very different between uh, between uh, between between yellow and seri uh, and the uh, modern birds, but also differences between the modern birds. If you take a parrot, a parrot can live uh, seventy years, and uh, a small uh, fly catcher will uh, uh, life expectancy will be maybe one, two, three years. But in captivity. They can stay for, for 15 years. Okay, let's go to Zoom and uh, Alan and then Susanna. Yeah, hi. Um, beautiful talk, particularly on a topic that has not been investigated very much despite its importance. So uh, very nice. Uh, I learned a lot. The question I have for you is, I I'm sure you have had a lot of ideas uh, thinking about fovea development. Uh, I mean, ganglion cell number is just one part of a very big equation. Uh, lack of uh, rods in that region and only, uh, you know, LM cones and everything is another. But I think the biggest puzzle for me uh, has always been the formation of this pit like structure and how one would sort of imagine that is forming, uh, uh, is there, so do you think of some kind of mechanical force by uh, change in cell number that may create that, or do you have any other sort of idea? How are you thinking about it? I just want to sort of pick your brain uh, to see uh, what, what, what your thoughts are. Yeah, thank you very much for this. Uh... Excellent, excellent central question. But this is exactly the, the question that we, we try to to, um, to ask. And uh, uh, 
and, and this is this is this is one of the reasons why the, the comparison between different bird species was is, is interesting because we um, we have this this uh, species with, with this very high density of cones and with no uh, no peak, and we have this uh, other species with very high density of cones with, uh, with, with no peak. So um, there is no uh, there is no need for uh, uh, I mean high density of dominant cells and codes is not sufficient uh, obviously, obviously to make to make a pit. Uh, there are other forces. Um, Mulaglia can be uh, important in this, uh, uh, in this respect. There is another important aspect, which is, which is uh, targeted uh, 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 cell death. Uh, in pigeon, I didn't show the, the, the data, but in pigeon, there is a decrease in the, in the number of, uh, of cells in the golden cell layer uh, uh, about two weeks after, after hatching. And uh, there is a, this, this induces a kind of bending of the, of the retina. So we don't know yet if the, 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 this, uh, this is a coincidence or if this bending uh, reflects the, the, the cell death uh, in, 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 in the incipient phobia and then um, uh, what it means. But this is, of course, a, a crucial question. We, we, we have not yet the answer. Um, the same with, uh, with, with uh, the, 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 the lack of, of rods in the, in the, in the phobia. We, we didn't find uh, phobia where there is a, a significant uh, proportion of, of, of rods. And uh, yeah. the only, the only um, uh, modern birds, like uh, this, uh, this northern of all, uh, with a very high density of, of rods. Um, in, in the central retina, uh, but there is no there, there, there is no problem. So we, we don't know yet if there is a, some kind of uh, incompatibility between the, the presence of rods and uh, the development. Of yeah, just a follow up, if if you don't mind. I mean, I think uh, I, I mean I'm I'm still sort of uh, 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 you know I've been thinking about it in some different ways, and I I'm. I'm still very puzzled that it can't be eight to seven or it can't be ganglion cell. There has to be some sort of trigger because fovea is formed. Uh, you know, it's not the number of cells. It's not number of ganglion cells and cones, as you just rightly pointed out. But it has to be something, something more than that, which triggers the formation of that, which does not happen in many many other species, which may have high number of cones or ganglion cells or whatever. So I, I think um, what the trigger is, is something will be fun to figure out. And I, I don't have any idea. Maybe I was hoping you have uh, something yeah. that will tell about mechanical or some other trigger, some uh, that, that might be initiating this process. What, is it, what we found, we found that the density of, of neurons in the, in the optic tectum uh, is higher when the fovea is uh, is deep, and uh, although the density of golden cells and of uh, of cells is, uh, is is slower in, in, in deep fovea than in swallow, so there is a uh, something it looks like a contradiction. Uh, it, it looks like the the golden cells in uh, in deep fovea are making uh, connections with a uh, uh, larger numbers of uh, of, of tectal neurons uh, than uh, dominant cells in a swallow or uh, swallow phobia. So, uh, and it takes uh, yeah for me the the, the time uh, which is required for to for, to, to establish the, this connection is, is crucial. But I agree with you that there, there is a mechanical force definitely uh, definitely a mechan mechanical force which is required for to, to, to just to create the things. But why? Uh, uh, what, what, what is the difference between the, the shallow and the, uh, and the deep pit? In the, in the shallow pit, the, the bipolar cells uh, remain in, in columns within the, within the, the, the pit. So, but the, the columns are, are, are shorter. They are shorter than in the, in the swallow where, where, where at the end you have this, uh, this deep phobia. So there are difference in the, in the way uh, Bipolar cells will are, are, are displaced uh, between the shallow and, uh, uh, and, and, and the deep phobia. And uh, we have the impression that in the, in the shallow phobia, 
the uh, large proportion of, of Bible cells uh, stay in the in the in the pit, uh, which may explain also the the fact that the uh, the pit remain uh, remain shallow. There is no this uh, this depression and uh, you know this this movement uh, spectacular movement that we can observe in deep uh, in deep tropica. Um, yes, I think I'm. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, thank you so much uh, for this beautiful and um, uh, really inspiring talk. And I admit I might be a little bit, you know, biased because uh, I really like uh, the theme of the discussion today. And I, I, you know, I had a kind of somewhat related question to an end, uh, but I would like really to know if you could comment uh, again you know, on the requirements of the morphological pit on a high acuity area. So can you, in other words, can you actually have a, a functional high acuity area and the result would be that immediate pathway, right? That low convergence in an area that doesn't have the morphological pit, right? So, and I'm thinking on the, you know, the beautiful example that you show us with the, the temporal fovea of the Eurasian sparrow hawk, which you have that, you know, gangnam cell to cone one to one. Um, and there's there's absolutely no morphological depression on the retina. I think you might have answered that uh, already you know, on the previous question, but if you could comment a little bit more, um, if you can have again a high a functional high acuity area in terms of high spatial resolution without without the pit. Uh, hello, Susanna. Thank you for the this this question, but I have no answer. Uh, basically, uh, we. The strategy, uh, uh, the strategy uh, followed by Swift and uh, and and Hawk, uh, is different. Of course, the, the Hawk is not flying as fast as uh, as, uh, as the Swift or the, the Swallow. Uh, so the uh, the need for a high proportion of uh, non immediate pathways, which might be involved in the uh, to track um, movements. Might be not so important for all than uh, than the, the soul. Uh, of course, we can we, we can imagine uh, that they like like other other authors have, have suggested that the, uh, there is a division of work of uh, work division between the the, the temple and, uh, and the central uh, retina um, with uh, the central retina, which might be uh, most sensitive to. Uh, which might have a better uh, uh, spatial acuity, uh, uh, whereas the, the temple for the yard may, might have a better the temple light. But um, we have no, we have, I cannot make more, uh, cannot answer more precisely to, 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 to your important question. I don't know why, why there is no pit in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the whole uh, temple uh, phobia. And uh, even in the in the central retina of the hawk, the the, the phobia is, is is very shallow, uh, in contrast to what, what we have in, in, in Swift. So we know that the the, the, the proportion of of normal cells, bipolar cells, and, and codes are different between swallow, between shallow and, and deep phobia. But uh, we don't know why this makes uh, lead to the to a, a, a deeper pit in. Uh, in, in oak uh, or in, 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 in swallow versus oak. All right, let's move to uh, Zach and David. Thank you for that really interesting talk. Um, so I was kind of curious, and this kind of goes off of Jenny's question, um, what are the incubation time, or how do the incubation times compare between- Yeah, this is an important question. Yeah, yeah. this, this was also one, one reason that, that justified the, the choice uh, the pigeon, the pigeon, pigeon shot because we have uh, the 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 pigeon uh, incub incubation time is, is 17, 18 days versus mm -hmm. twenty one days in uh, in, uh, in the chicken. Oh, okay, so, so you so actually have longer a longer developmental period. Sorry, you actually have a longer developmental period in chicken. Yeah, even mm -hmm. though they have yeah. had a, an earlier onset. But it, so it's a it's a. But some some modern birds uh, are actually uh, at earlier stages, which makes it difficult. The problem is, is the scaling. You have to, when you mm -hmm. compare two species, you, 
we try to compare species which have more or less the same uh, brain size, because otherwise it's very difficult to, 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 to calibrate the stages of development and uh, to make all the experiments that you, that, that you want to do. So for, for us, uh, the, the difference between, uh, between pigeon and chicken was, uh, there are differences, but they are not so important that with, with other, other species, but this is an important Not Out of curiosity, have you looked at any like tropical birds that might, you know, there might be selective pressures for a better color distribution? Not yet, not yet. <laughs> but it's not too slow yet. <laughs> Yeah, you just mentioned recently, but um, what's the main difference in the retina between diurnal birds and nocturnal birds like owls? Yes, so the not in the order, uh, is uh, Tony Hall, which is a, a true nocturnal bird. There is there is simply uh, no 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 codes. So there there, there is a, the ninety nine percent of of, of, uh, of photoreceptors are, are, are rods with with, with huge uh, ex, uh, outer segments. And um, the distribution is uh, the, the the density of uh, of rods is, is is bigger in the central retina than, than at, the, at the periphery, um, but uh, the, the one at the frontal uh, frontal view there is no there is no there is no lateral view. There is a phobia. Also. There is no phobia. No phobia. No, there is no phobia in a hole. Okay, let's go to Michael. Hi, thanks very much. That was a great uh, talk. Um, I, I think um, one comment that I would like to make is that uh, uh, chicks hatch, they are ready to go, uh, the chicken, the fowl. Um, but when pigeons and um, uh, most modern birds hatch, uh, they have uh, two or three or four days uh, before their eyes open. So perhaps. Um, they can uh, play catch up in that period of time. Um, but my question was, um, do you have any um, idea of how much um, pre-processing of, of the signal is being done in, in the retina before um, uh, central processing um, occurs in the brain? How, how, how is the... Uh, how is the signal um, yeah. um, treated before it, it goes out? <clears throat> I think we, we don't know much about this. Uh, this is an important question again, but uh, <clears throat> this is always frustrating to work with, uh, with, with birds because we know so little. So you know, that it was a beautiful, um, beautiful study published uh, 30 years ago, and then people stopped to work with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with birds and with pigeons. And, uh, and this was a, so, so we have a, a, a real lack of, uh, of, of knowledge, and your question is important. What, what I can say that uh, the, 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 in pigeon, uh, there, there is no outer segments, or segments are very short uh, uh, at the time of, of hatching. So during the, the four days post hatching, when pigeon has closed high, the, the photoreceptors are probably not, not, not working, or they are working at uh, not the normal level. Uh, this is the only thing that I can answer. I, I can answer. I don't know the answer, but probably the the, 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 the retina, like in chicken, uh, may start to 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 to, to work uh, even before the the, the differentiation of the dose of the is complete, and we have some spontaneous activity of uh, of ganglion cells. But because of the delay in the production of ganglion cells, the the production of ganglion cells and and uh, and cones in a in, in pigeon uh, almost coincide. So we have uh, the, the production of wrong cells and, and coins uh, around embryonic day, uh, day 10. So we have known this, uh, this lag that we, uh, that we can observe in, uh, in, in chicken. So it may change quite a lot of, uh, of things, but we have, no, uh, we have no clue. We don't know how the, uh, how the, the golden cells and the other the retinal neurons are, uh, are responding before the Connection I established between the between the retina and the, the optic vector. So I don't know if I answered your question. Okay, let's move to uh, Dr. Winkler. Uh, uh, Don, you have the comments, and you muted. 
Mr. Yuted. Great talk. Thank you. I'm curious if the foveal conformation uh, contributes magnification. Sorry, can, could you repeat your, your question? Do, do we get magnification from the shape of the foveal pit? Yeah. I think it's conclaval. Yeah, this, is, this was uh, one of the uh, uh, main function uh, attributed to, to, to the fovea is this uh, a lens, uh, a lens effect. And it was a, a lot of papers uh, where people have uh, uh, suggested and, uh, that the, the shape of the, of the fovea, the, the shape of the slope uh, may influence and uh, the, 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 the Focusing of the, of image on the, on, on on codes, but uh, in the so there are there are works uh, very old works in the in, 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 in pigeon and like in in in, uh, in hawks and in, in, in other bird species about this uh, this, uh, this possible uh, property and um, but I think that it is quite difficult of course to manipulate the the, the system so it's difficult to uh, to to get a definitive answer about this. Uh, Magnification effect of the with the lens effect of the of, of the fovea. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, I, I'm I'm wondering uh, in the in the pigeon as as the outer segments are growing. Um, I I should know this. Maybe it's not known. I don't know. What is the status of the synapse? The the ribbon synapses in the photoreceptor terminals. Are they are they intact? Are they capable of signaling prior to development of the outer segment, or, or or is what's what's the status of the synapse there? Is, is it like Whaley's ground squirrel retina and hibernation, where the synapses sort of disassemble and then and then assemble only after they're capable of transducing outer segment information? Do do, do you know? Does anybody know? Uh, me, I don't know. Uh, I have no idea. No, no sorry, but in Tijan, no, I, I have no, uh, the, 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 the rabbin are, are visible uh, after, after hatching. They start to be visible uh, after about two weeks uh, post hatching in Tijan, but uh, this is uh, the only information that I can, uh, I can give you. I, nothing, I, I know nothing about the, the, the dynamic of this. Uh, Really? Yeah. Hi, Dr. Matter. Really nice talk. Um, so you kind of made the case for using the bird maybe as a model for, for a human, which is which is an interesting kind of idea. And one of the so in human albinism, one of the findings is foveal hypoplasia. I was wondering if you had been able to get your hands on any albino birds to see if the same if you see the same finding there. Not yet, no. no. This is a very important. This is a very interesting question, but uh, it will be, of course. But we have no. Um, to my knowledge, there is no uh, albinos uh, pigeon. But I might be wrong. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I we discuss a lot with uh, with pigeon breeders, and uh, they they know, know they are also uh, um, involved in uh, uh, in uh, in rising pigeon. Uh, or, homing pigeon, but they, they don't, um, uh, I'm not aware that, uh, that albinos pigeon uh, exist. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult for, for ethical reasons and for regulation to have access to, to wild birds. So um, I'm I can not answer to you. Interesting question. Vladimir. Fascinating work. Thank you for your talk. I have many questions, but I'll ask a couple. So if you compare the, the uh, structures of adult retinas of chicken and the fast flying birds, you told us about what happens in the inner retina. Are there also outer retina differences that might explain or contribute to the no. functional differences? Yeah, there are many, there are many differences uh, in, the, um, in the outer segments of, of colors mm -hmm. between the, the polya and the, the the the, the the segment, the density is very different. The shape is different. Uh, the length of the outer segment is different. 
the, the, the organization of the inner segment is different. The uh, cones in the in the in the in the for the long axons, um, which are uh, much longer than uh, at the periphery. So there are, there are many differences. There, you have really the impression that, that cones in the fovea are, are, are different from cones uh, outside the fovea. Also, the density is, uh, is, is, is quite high. I mean, you know, there, there, is no, there is no rods uh, in, uh, in, in perifovial area. But uh, despite this, the, 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 the organization, the density, the shape, and the, everything is different between the, the fovea versus perifovial regions. This is an important part. Yeah. And if you, if, I don't know if you've ever thought of that or tried this experiment to so take chip and you see the retinoid cuts into you know, some of the genes that you can identify to try to prolong cell differentiation. Yeah. And this is our great. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is, this is, I mean, to, to uh, what, what Susanna did uh, in, uh, in chicken to play with, 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 with retinoid acid. Um, um, what we what we, we we don't know yet the, the, what is the, the concentration of retinic acid in, in, in the pigeon. What, what we know we know that the, the, the mitochondrial activity is, is prolonged, and uh, we uh, we know that retinic acid is, is, is required, but uh, we don't yet play with this. Uh, with this, uh, this is important a nice experiment to do, of course, to try to uh, to be able to um, to block mitochondrial activity uh, at early. Uh, stages and just to, to, to determine whether it, uh, it triggered the, uh, the early uh, ganglion cell differentiation. What we did, we did some, some in vitro manipulation where we, we can we isolate the, the pigeon retina, we put the pigeon retina in, a, in, in the dish. Uh, and in these conditions, the, there is a, an early upregulation of A2H7. So it looks like when we uh, perturbate the, 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 the normal uh, cell proliferation by uh, putting this uh, retina in vitro and by decreasing the, the, the rate of cell proliferation, we, we accelerate, the, the, the increase the, the, but we don't know yet if this leads to the increase of ganglion, the decrease of ganglion cell production. But I was asking kind of the opposite question, if you take a chicken retina and to try to boost and try to boost the number of ganglion cells, whether you can do this and whether you can But the problem is with, with, with chicken, uh, the pool of, of progenitors is not high enough at the time when ganglion cells are produced. So, um, you know, all, all at, at embryonic day six, uh, the half of the population of progenitors are Will, uh, will, be, uh, will, be, will enter the ganglion cell uh, fate and, and lineage. And so and I don't think maybe it's possible to just to, to make a conversion of the whole population, but we can try. <laughs> and the final question go to uh, Francis. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you for the talk. Um, I had a question about your deep learning algorithm for axon segmentation. I was curious how long it took the process and okay, you know, the no, no worries. Yeah, yeah, I was just uh, finishing the seminar, so it's still full. Thank you, Humberto. I was wondering how long that yeah. I was wondering how long that axon segmentation algorithm took the process, and if the same software can be applied to uh, optic nerve images of other species. Yeah, yeah I was asking how long the how the axon segmentation deep learning algorithm, how long it took the process. And if that could be applied to ah, yes. other species, of course, course. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, about the the the, the tree that uh, 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 Michel is dropped. Um, yeah. So um, the question is: Yes, we can of course apply this uh, this um, algorithm is, is freely freely available. So of course, it will be. We need more more training. So yeah. so anyway, we we are we are counting. Uh, axons uh, in different species. Uh, right now, until to know it was on it was bird species, but of course we can extend this counting to to to, 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 to other species and, and human. But the problem is you, you the, the, as you know the, the quality historical quality of uh, of human optic nerve is, is, is rather low. So this is a problem. Uh, you, you need a, a very good quality to have a very if the, the axon is not well delimited I mean with uh, Myelin is, uh, 
disrupted or the, the axon is not uh, clearly uh, identified, the, 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 the deep learning will, will miss it, uh, the axons. But yes, you know, we, this was, I developed the tool, yeah. other tools are already available, but the, the problem with, uh, with, with birds, uh, there, there's a heterogeneity in the, in, of the size of the, of, of the axons, and uh, very small body that you cannot detect uh, by, by uh, light microscopy, only visible uh, by EM, and you have huge axons. So the, the, there is a wide range uh, in the size of axons, and the distribution of axons is also very different uh, within the, <coughs> not it's not as homogeneous as in, in mouse, for instance. And you have millions. So in, in all, you, you can go up to, uh, to eight, uh, around 10 million axons in, in, in one of the huge. All right, and uh, this will conclude. We have just one more.